right. Um, so he said, uh, I'm the Chief Community Integration Officer at Rockport Healthcare Services. And we are going to talk about nursing home residents still needing to be needed. I want you to think about that for a second. People still need to be needed, even when they're in a nursing home or in assisted living. We're going to talk a little bit about seeing the potential in each person to continue to contribute to their communities, even with significant physical and cognitive challenges. And most importantly, we're going to talk about the transformational power of selfless service. And we're going to start with a couple pictures here. And at first glance, they look pretty similar. If you look at uh, both of them have nursing home residents, both of them have dogs, both of them have smiles. And as we go through the presentation, we're going to come back to this and we're going to see that although uh, they seem very similar, they're really not. So let's start at the beginning. And I basically spent most of my career going into troubled nursing homes. And one particular nursing home on the central coast of California, we had been working for about three years, had a motivated staff. Uh, finally got our five-star rating, quality measures look good. I mean, and it was a struggle. And we just got done with our survey, and the surveyors were very complimentary. Wow, you guys have done an amazing job. And I'm thinking, wow, we made it. And I'm walking to our all-staff meeting to congratulate everybody on the hard work. And I'm passing by some of the residents in the hall. And they're sitting there like lumps in their wheelchair. And I'm thinking, what is going on? There's about 100 people waiting for me at the all-staff meeting, and I just stopped and thought, this can't be the end. There's got to be something else. So, you know, people didn't look that much different from, you know, when we started three years earlier. So I go in, I say, congratulations, guys, awesome. Everyone give us yourselves a round of applause. We've really worked hard. Now I want to really have a real honest discussion because our people are not excited, enthusiastic. Our people still look pretty depressed and apathetic to me, and I don't know why. And I, and I really didn't know why, and I just said, let's have a, let's brainstorm, let's talk about it. So one of the CNAs raises his hand and says, you want to know the truth? And I'm like, yikes, okay, all right. So he says, well, their lives suck. And I said, okay, well, explain yourself. Well, if it was me, and all I had to look forward to for the rest of my life was thanking other people, and no one needed me anymore, I don't care how nice people were to me, I would want to end it. And that was a, a pivotal, shocking moment. I don't know how long I stood up there not saying one word, because it's the first time I realized people in nursing homes are care receivers. We are the caregivers, and they are the care receivers. And no matter how good we get as caregivers, if your life is just being a care receiver, is that really a life? So, so the next day, we get resident council together. And I'm like, all right, guys, it's time to start giving back. I don't know what that's going to look like, but let's talk about it. Get all the residents there. Alma, who's 94 years old, raises her hand and says, honey, I think we should feed the homeless. And I went, uh-oh. I was, I was thinking write notes to the acute hospital. You know, I was not thinking feed the homeless. So I was trying to get off that as quick as possible. I was like, that is a great idea, Alma. I love that idea. Let's put it up there. No, 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 honey. I've been doing it for 30 years. Every week at my church. I know how to do it. It's not that hard. No, I'm with you, Alma. I am with you. See, I wrote it up there. Feed the homeless. Now, let's brainstorm. Come on, what do we got? And what did everyone do? We want to feed the homeless. Oh, crap. So that's actually, I got dragged in to this. And uh, I had no idea how that was going to happen. People with all strokes, dementia, Parkinson's, how are they going to prepare a meal? How are they going to feed people? 
one thing I promised Alma, and that's Alma, and uh, is that I would start every talk by talking about her because she's the creator of this program, and that's her feeding someone at the shelter. So a couple months into this, we have Ken, who came to us for short-term rehab, and big guy, diabetic, really a mess. And he was going home, of course, didn't make it home. So ended up staying long-term with us. He was furious. I mean furious. He was not going to be a nursing home resident. We had him on Q15 minute checks for suicide watch when sweet CNAs would come in with his tray. Ken, here, you know, we got this for you. He would throw things, get the F out of my room, you know, B. I mean, he was a piece of work. So I'm thinking, well, perfect. This is great. He needs some meaning and purpose in his life, right? So I walk down and I'm thinking, this is going to fit in just perfect. Ken, you know, we got this program. We really need your help. We're feeding hungry people in our community. And you know what he said? I hate the effing homeless. You know, those, those guys, they make more money than I've ever made in my best year as a salesman. <laughs> they have a Mercedes parked around the back. Don't let them fool you. I'm like, well, gosh, that, that didn't work exactly how I thought. So uh, a couple days later, we're actually doing, we're preparing the food. And, and at this point, the residents made this cheese, ham, macaroni uh, mass, and it was really hard to scoop. And so I went in to Ken, because that afternoon, we're jumping in the wheelchair van and going over to the shelter. So, and I say, hey, Ken, you know what? We got this macaroni cheese ham bake. It's really tough to scoop. He says, I hate that. I know. I know. I know you hate the effing homeless, but you know, here, here's, here's the thing, is I don't have our ladies. It is really, and it really was, hard to scoop that. So what I'm asking you is, are you capable of scooping a scoop and slapping it on a plate 150 times? I, I told him, you know what? You can avert your eyes. You don't have to look at the people. I won't get anything on videotape. No one will know you're there. But I could use your help. This is a true story. So, and he's like, well, I don't know. And I said, well, if, if you're willing, show up 4 o'clock in the lobby. So this, he has not been out of bed for like a couple weeks. So he's in the lobby at 4 o'clock. So we go to the shelter. Um, he's pretty grumpy, saying, I might say something. And he, he might, you know. And I'm like, well, try, try, to, try, try not to, Ken. Try to just slap, stay focused, slap the food on the plate, you know. So the first 10 people, he's looking all grumpy. And then a family comes through with two children. And Ken starts sobbing. I mean, sobbing, not little tears, he's sobbing there in front of everybody and uh, saying, I didn't know, I didn't know. So we, we get back to, the, uh, to our community and he says, you know, Matthew, I didn't know and, and here's the deal. I got, some, I got a proposal for you and I have two demands. One is I need vice president of marketing and sales business cards because the residents are making soap to pay for this food, right? And, he's, and he wants to increase our sales, and I need a direct phone line in my room. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm like, well, Ken, you know, we can, he's, no, no, that's my demands. If you're not interested, it's, you know, you're gonna lose out, you know? So I'm like, okay, but don't BS me. I mean, if you're really gonna do it, you really need to do it. So a week later, Ken is rolling up to my office saying, so here's the problem. I just squeezed the Elks for 50 bars. Do we have 50 bars? No, we don't. You better get those residents working because I'm a man of my word. And if I can't deliver on the product, you know. So I want you guys to understand that here's a guy who's on suicide watch throwing stuff at people because he didn't want to be a nursing home resident, but he wasn't a nursing home resident. And here he is. And that's him. So a couple months, couple months go by, and I'm walking down the hall, and that same CNA who's giving me a hard time in all staff meeting says, I think Gene should be able to participate in this. And I'm like, well, that'd be great, but you know, Gene has dementia. 
So I don't know how that's going to work. And he said, well, you know what? I think you're discriminating against people with dementia. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know what? You're killing me, OK? <laughs> but if we want to try it, I have no idea how that's going to work, because we can't really give her directions. But it, what, what's the worst that could happen? We'll go up there. So we bring her up. We got a big pot of food. She's got the scoop in her hand. Right? And I'm going like this with her. I'm going, OK, Gene, ready? We're going to scoop it, and we're going to slap it on there. And her arm is like spaghetti. Right? And she's smiling at me, all happy, no connection to her arm at all. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> you know, because there's 150 people waiting in line. So the first guy comes up, who, of course, has no idea she has dementia. Right? So he's got his empty plate. And he's like, oh, man, this is, smells so good. Thank you so much. I haven't had anything to eat all day, and she's shaking her head and smiling and super happy, no connection to the food at all, you know. He's talking to her, 30 seconds go by, and I'm getting real fidgety because this, this is a resident project, not a staff project. Staff are not participating. So, and then a little miracle happened. He went like this. He naturally cued her. You see that food right there? Whoop, I would love some of it on my plate right here. <laughs> Right down there, whoop, whoop, whoop. He was making a little noise like that, and she realized she had a scoop in her hand, realized she had a pot of food, realized there's an empty plate. And guys, people with dementia, we have them fold napkins. They know what to do. I got news for you. They know how to slap food on a plate. So she slapped it on there. He said, thank you so much. She said, you're welcome, honey. Glad to do it. And that was not something that came out of her. So she, we're back at the nursing home. And of course, she has dementia. She has no, she did not remember the memory being, but she's rolling around in her wheelchair going up to every single person in the hallway. We're really doing it, aren't we? We're really doing it. We're really doing it. Because who cares about the memory it's that feeling in your chest that you did something valuable. And I know that's what's happening with Jean. She knew she did something important. So, and here's Jean. So, that takes us to present day. So, at Rockport Healthcare Services, we have over 70 facilities, 70 communities now that uh, are participating in this program, over 6,000 meals per month that residents are preparing and serving to hungry people in their communities. And I want to show you a little bit uh, in their own words how it looks. It really feels good. It's nice to have that volunteers come and help us when we need it here. But it's nice to be able to get out and go help somebody else. And our, you feel like you're worth living. It's a really a good feeling when you sit around a bunch of people and we have this camaraderie going on and everybody's pleasant and nice and laughing and talking with each other without complaining about their pains and their illnesses and stuff. It's just a real pleasant group right now. And then there's always a lineup for who gets to go on the down and serve. Yeah. And when we come back, what was it like? How many were there? You know? Do they like our food? It makes me feel real good because I've been down myself. And that was people that I didn't even know. They brought me back up. And that makes me feel good that I can help another person come back up. So that takes us to the future now forward, and this is senior canine adoption, which just started this last month. So this, the, the communities are serving meals once a month, but is it possible for nursing home residents to actually have a resident run dog fostering program? So this is Bootsy, and he's the first dog and the residents all have tasks that they've agreed to do throughout the day to foster Bootsy. He was abandoned in Mojave. He was 11 pounds. He was at the Kern County Animal Services. The residents fostered him. 
one of the residents is the adoption coordinator. So people from the community call in to the resident to see, get appointments, to uh, see Bootsy, look at uh, if they want to adopt him or not. And people, this is Sharon. Do you notice how many staff are around while she's taking Bootsy outside? And she's had a stroke, so she can't use the right side of her body. She's just got her, the left side, and she put the leash on Bootsy, took him outside, and she even scoops the poop out there. Our therapists have worked on adaptive equipment for them. <clears throat> so now we're coming all the way full circle. So on the right-hand side, we see a pet visit. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with pet visits, but what I would like you guys to do is I want you to put yourself in these two pictures. So it's you in the nursing home right now, and you're about to make a call to your loved ones and tell them about your day, your month. So you're telling them we had a really cute dog that came to see us, right, that we got to visit with today. So let me tell you the story on the left-hand side, which is this is the adoption party. So the lady who's kneeling down, those are her two daughters, 10 and 13. This was a surprise for them. They had no idea that uh, they were going to be able to adopt Bootsy today. So they came in. The mother explained to the daughters, let me tell you what these people here in this nursing home are doing. They've taken Bootsy from 11 pounds in three and a half weeks to 16 and a half pounds. He's got a beautiful coat. Now he's rehabilitated, he's ready to go home with a family, and that's really important, girls, because the residents can't save another dog until they get this one adopted. And I told him, you're very responsible, and you two are gonna be up to the, the challenge of taking Bootsy and giving him a wonderful life for the rest of his life. And this is the moment those two girls broke down, started sobbing. So I want you to put yourself on that side, on the left, and tell your family, loved ones, friends, about this amazing program that you are running, where you're saving senior dogs in your community, and everyone's doing it together. So that is the, the story of A Heart to Serve. And uh, I sure appreciate your time today. Um, and if anyone has any questions, um, track me down in the conference. I'll be glad to talk to you. Thank you.